So what happened here? Well, through the game, we loved it. And it was a huge part it's of the smoking. evolution of virtual reality. So set the charcoal off and you set the, the wood chips up. <laughs> I want my baby back, baby back. We kept it going for a long time. Ready it done. Team Delicious. Was real proud Delicious. Of Delicious. And then ultimately, it just dwindled. And unfortunately, keeping things alive takes work. This, this is the part of jobs like mine that sucks. We're going to support it until August, but then it's going to be out of market because these things are meant to mean to people. I'm talking about the return on the human capital. Human capital. Human capital. Okay, so Meta need to seriously work on their PR. They seem to be making some weird decisions which negatively affect their own community, and the more they talk about it, the worse it seems to get. But I think there's a lot more to the story than most of us realise. My name's D Sachs, and I'd like to take a speculative deep dive, theorising what's behind some of these mad meta decisions. So Meta is in the middle of their Reality Lab Summit, covering their roadmap over the next four years, but we'll talk about this a little later on. First things first, Echo VR. Now this has been covered already by far more talented people than I, but rather than rehash the issues of decimating arguably one of the larger VR communities in the space, and how wrong it is they're avoiding the seemingly better solutions to just shutting everything down. Why are they doing this? Andrew Bosworth, the CTO of Meta, did a Q&A that I think did more harm than good. It's pretty clear there's a lot the company can't talk about, but one thing stood out to me. He talked about human capital. Human capital. The most unfortunate wording to describe employees at Ready at Dawn. Now everyone is focused on this word as to how cold the culture is at Meta, but looking at Reddit Dawn's history, I think there's more to it. Lone Echo 1 and 2 are some of my favourite ever games, and arguably the best single player story experiences in VR. The second game saw significant and multiple delays before releasing, I think in large part due to Covid, but I think in another part because the team had been split across several projects. Echo VR for Quest, Echo Arena and Combat for PC, and additionally there were heavy rumours Lone Echo 2 was being developed for the Quest 2 at the same time, which obviously never happened. In the middle of last year they confirmed they're already working on new exciting projects with an S, plural. My theory is that they do have an Echo VR replacement, but they're not ready to release any specific details. I mean that would have been the smart thing to do when announcing the server closures of Echo VR, obviously. I think people would have been but currently the decision feels antagonistic rather than just what would have been a money grubbing decision to force an upgrade to a game on the newer headset. MetaQuest 3 will be announced this year. It's pretty much confirmed at this point, so what are Meta doing? Well, I think, and doing my best to avoid hyperbole, MetaConnect 2023 is going to be the biggest VR event for Meta yet. The advent of PSVR 2 competition and the unannounced Apple headset on the horizon, they're in hyperdrive to deliver with Quest 3. Quest Pro sales results, unofficial estimates put in the product around 50k sold, proving that price has been a major factor in the response. Games are king and social aspects push retention, which you'll notice has been a keyword cropping up more and more from their exec team. They don't just want large sales like the currently close to 20 million Quest sales, they want those same 20 million regularly playing and interacting. So back to Ready at Dawn. I think they're developing a launch game for Quest 3 and I believe they're behind schedule, hence Boz's mention of Human Capital. They want to put all hands on deck to get this game or games ready for Quest 3 launch, or at the very least have a good amount to show and tease for the Quest 3 post launch. Meta want to stack Quest 3 with launch games in an attempt to bury the AAA plaudits of PSVR 2, and I'm, I'm all for it. If I'm right, this is the direct result of competition. Think of all the developers Meta have purchased, and there have been barely any releases. I think they're all working quietly on Quest 3 games. Meta Quest Pro development has also been super slow, with only Red Matter 2 taking real advantage of the machine, so I think the focus is elsewhere. This goes hand in hand with recent cancellations of two of the headsets to streamline development. There's a lot of doom and gloom with people thinking Meta is crumbling. I think they're maximising efficiency. We're eight months out from Kinect as of the time of writing, and I wonder if this is too close to change the now infamous cab design shared by Bradley. Could Quest 3 designs be amended to allow eye track to rendering? I don't mean full face tracking, just eye tracking. If Quest 3 is at least two times more powerful, Reality Lab Summit confirmation by the way, then eye track to foveate rendering could boost performance further. The speed of progression on standalone is very impressive. The new XR2 Gen 2 chip is also more efficient with a 4 nanomicron design, so potentially they can get more performance out of it versus the XR2 chip's lower efficiency of around 50% CPU usage. I think we'll genuinely see a generational leap for standalone VR at Meta Connect 2023. All these developer purchases by Meta have to come to fruition for Quest 3. I think there's a lot to be excited about, but let's remain sceptical until we see it. It's fun to speculate, and business-wise, Meta are making cold moves in the name of progress, especially listening to Boz. 
The attitude seems to be to keep moving forward and leave everything else behind. We'll see if this is a good or bad thing for the VR industry long term. Now I'm new around here so if you managed to watch the whole video thank you so much, drop me a like, hit the bell, subscribe for the next video where I cover how to snag a Quest Pro for half price. See you on the other side.